Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, my name is Victoria Martinez de la Cruz. I'm here today with my colleague here, Rosella Esplendido, and with Mahati Shamari. And this is Newcomers Need You, How to Be a Good Mentor. As you probably might guess, this is a session about community, uh, more precisely about how to help to grow the community, how to onboard new people in open source community. Um, move to the slide. Um, this presentation is going to be um, split in four sections. Uh, we are going to start with why mentoring is important in free and open source software. Then we are going to move to um, to give a few examples of where you can find new people, uh, where you how you can do to spot a newcomer, uh, and then uh, we are going to move to what it takes to be a mentor and. Um, to help you define if you are ready for mentoring. Oh, and finally, we are going to close this presentation with a few tips and tricks of our experience in the past couple of years mentoring new people in OpenStack. So yes, why mentoring is important in free and open source software. So first, let's do an overview of um, why, uh, of how is our community currently composed? Uh, what kind of contributors do we have in our community? And as in most open source projects, um, the main contributors are people that are working full time. It's like people that are working for a company that is uh, somehow using OpenStack and that are being paid, you know, to work full time in an OpenStack project. But we also don't have to forget that is in open source we have people that can contribute voluntarily. That is, uh, for instance, students that are using OpenStack for approach they are working on school and uh, they are you know trying to get involved and understand how things work we also have those classic technical enthusiasts that want to give back something to the project they, they like and uh, want to help you know to make the project get bigger so um, how are tasks in open source projects being you know um, split huh? who is working on what in open source organizations uh, usually, high contributors, of course, they have more time in their hands, they have more resources, so they usually take the core feature development and they also work on fixing uh, critical or high priority bugs in OpenStack. And uh, so what, what is left for uh, the people that are working independently? And usually these people that uh, are like more on their free times contribute with uh, the bug reporting, um, for instance, also with bug fixing, but for medium and low priority bugs, also with uh, change in the wiki or in documentation or something like really small changes on translation as well. Um, okay, now understanding um, what kind of tasks we have in OpenStack, um, let's stop for a moment and think on how is the onboarding process for OpenStack. How many of you are contributors in OpenStack right now? OK, that's a good month. So let's get back to your first patch in OpenStack. Well, what do you have to do? You have to create your OpenStack account. You have to create your Launchpad account if you don't already have any. You have to set up your development environment. You probably had to use DevStack in some moment. And everybody knows that sometimes it can be a little painful to set up. <laughs> uh, you had to, um, you don't forget about the signing of the um, contributor agreement. And uh, right now, just imagine that the process goes smoothly and everything is OK. How many steps I just enumerated? How many things you had to read in order to understand how to access, how to get started in an open source project? It's just a lot. And usually, for high contributors, it's like usually work on a team or have someone, somebody in their, you know, uh, in the company they are working with, they are working with that they can ask or they can, you know, get some guidance. But for people that are just starting, um, they don't have anyone. So it's like they've hit their first blocker, and usually they don't, they don't have time to debug and to understand what's going on. So they just don't contribute what they had to contribute. But OK, just leave that aside for a moment. What happens after uh, you submit your first contribution? Life goes on, right? Um, then you have you know, 
to understand how code reviewing works. Uh, you, see, you see that it's a guy named Jenkins that put a minus one in your patch and you don't understand why or, or what's going on. Then you see comments of other reviewers saying, okay, would you, could you help, you, could you change this, could you, you know, some need speaks or, you know, usual process. And you don't know how to change that, how to amend your patch, how to uh, keep going on these discussions with the reviews that just provide some feedback to your patch. And also, how do you communicate with the rest of the community? You have to learn about IRC, which for me is like everyday thing. It's like I'm already used to it, I love it, and I use it every day. So, But for most people, that is not so straightforward. Also, how the weekly meetings work, how the mailing lists work, how do you start a conversation if this is the right place to ask, and so on. There are so many things, right? Talk to another slide. So, um, there are many ways to help change this, to make this process easier. But in our experience, is we see that mentoring is what works best. And why is that? Is um, if you can contribute mentoring, um, you will help uh, the community to grow. You will help to attract people that has different backgrounds, that has different experience that um, have different ideas. You are helping OpenStat to get more point of views. And uh, usually when you have that opportunity is uh, for free, is you are having the chance to make OpenStack better because you are usually covering more use case that probably if you are only working with people from, I don't know, some area or some background, you would miss the, that enriched uh, experience, right? Also, um, you will help individuals. Uh, you are going to help at least with the, la the professional life of only one person that on their own, probably some, some of the people that we helped uh, also help another people to get involved. And that process keeps going on. And we ended up with a network of contributors that are helping more people to get involved. And you are on, on that sense, you are helping to get people, you are on, not only impacting positively in the life of one person, but the, you are also impacting on the um, quality and the capabilities of your field. We are getting more and more qualified professionals working in OpenStack because of this. And if I haven't already convinced you <laughs> with all these uh, positive aspects of mentoring, uh, what uh, it gives you, what is, uh, why it's good for you to help mentoring. Uh, you are going to learn a lot. It's incredible. It's like when you talk with people that has such different backgrounds, such different experience than you, and that is not whatsoever involved with the person you are working with, they usually um, see things that you don't see because you have been involved and working on the same thing for so long, right? Um, so in order to illustrate this, I picked this quote from Otto van Spinsmark that says, full side they learn by experience. I prefer to profit by other people's experience. That's uh, more or less what I try to transmit in this section. So now I'm going to um, bring to Mahati. She's going to tell you what, where you should look for mentees. Yeah, now that we've, uh, we have a good foundation of why we should mentor, uh, the, let's look at the avenues we have to mentor. Uh, we have Outreachy uh, Internship Program, which OpenStack has been participating for about three years now, and uh, we've, we both have been mentors, and we've had very successful mentors who, who are now involved full-time in it, and it's, it, it, it takes place twice a year, and the duration is uh, three months. It's sponsored by a free software foundation, so if uh, you're interested in mentoring, uh, it's highly recommended that uh, there is a really small uh, sign-up program. Uh, we usually send out a lot of mailing mails uh, to advertise this, and if you're uh, if you're just subscribed to the OpenStack mailing list, you would uh, you would have come across this. And there is also a Google Summer of Code program where um, that happens once a year, and it's for three months. OpenStack has been on and off a participant, and unfortunately this time we weren't be able to be able to participate in it. 
uh, it's sponsored by Google. Uh, it's uh, another thing to note is Google Summer of Code is only for code, code contributors, but um, Outreachy is for even if you are in marketing or um, documentation, it's open for all sorts of uh, software contributions, not just code. Uh, so, other than internships, what, how else can I mentor? Can can someone mentor? We uh, we have this amazing uh, upstream training that happens every summit. Uh, ev it's it, it's a two-day workshop, and again, there is uh, there is a circulation of mail uh, on OpenStack mailing list wherein you're supposed to sign up and give your preferences as uh, as to what you're working on and uh, little details about your professional life so that you can uh, sign up for this training. Uh, it's it's amazing because you uh, you get to mentor people uh, who I mean they come all the way on Saturday and to to just be inclusive in this training which happens on uh, usually on Saturday and Sunday prior to the summit so it's great to meet uh, new contributors who are eager to learn and uh, what this training does is they uh, we give them real uh, bugs and features we uh, will ask them to I mean we'll help them fix uh, fix the bugs and help them learn the tools uh, which are required uh, in the process of submission. And uh, we also have a follow-up session where, wherein we will follow through, follow them until it's accepted by the OpenStack uh, community. After, even after that, there's one more follow-up session. If, if there's still concerns, uh, uh, we can still uh, get in touch. And in that follow-up session, you can still raise your concerns. Oh, yeah. So there is uh, the fun part is we use Legos to um, to, uh, to simulate what the uh, what the OpenStack community does, and uh, if nothing entices you, I think Legos uh, is is a great way to actually learn and simulate uh, an environment. Uh, so uh, this summit, we have a uh, lightweight mentoring which has been sponsored by the Women of OpenStack, and uh, it's a. Uh, it's this this includes technical train technical mentoring and career guidance so uh, if if you if you want to be involved in career guidance uh, a mentor you can be in a different area than your mentee and if you you are you are required to um, spend about an hour per month we have actually guidelines for this uh, i actually included the guidelines at the end of the slides but if you want to be a technical mentor you're supposed to be uh, in the same area as your Menti, and uh, you're required to spend about an hour per month, uh, per week. Um, so it's, um, it's. I think we've. Uh, this has been introduced only in this summit, and uh, the initiative has been that we've had men mentor signers sign up for us prior to the summit. And in this summit, we've, we've had a speed uh, mentoring session wherein um, mentors and mentees they catch up and they get to talk to each other for about five minutes, and mentees uh, cycle around through the room. And after that, there's a survey conducted for uh, mentors and mentees so that we can potentially match them up for uh, next uh, mentoring program. So if, if uh, we st we're still looking for mentors for this program, we only have about, um, I think, 137 uh, mentees have signed up for this, but we only have about half uh, uh, mentors for this. So um, I think it's great because uh, you uh, we don't I mean we don't have to be specialized say only in technical uh, area we can as well um, career guidance wherein you can just uh, let them know how to get involved with the community or how to communicate or uh, how to uh, grow their career within the within the open source community. So there's always general mentoring uh, if um, if none of this is is if you cannot commute, commit your time, and if you if you think all of this is a lot of con time consuming, and if you but you're still interested in mentoring, there is um, uh, so we uh, we often find people at least in my experience we found we found people where uh, they just want to come and contribute, but they just don't know where to look or what to find. So uh, there have been cases where they've just um, invented sort of a bug and they've just went on patching up that for every project in OpenStack. So um, when that happened. Uh, appropriately that was abandoned but um, later on uh, it's important that uh, when we encounter people like that we actually uh, let them know where to uh, where to find uh, you know, where to find uh, bugs or how to contribute and how to fix the feature or help them find the documents than um, just stopping at a point where uh, I abandon your patch 
Um, there are other uh, like uh, we also have uh, OpenStack and OpenStack Dev mailing list, as we all know. But OpenStack OPW has uh, is an outreachy channel exclusively where. Uh, a lot of people are come down asking for help and it's a great channel if you're not subscribed yet i think uh, you should should do it because um, on and off it's there is no time commitment for it so on and off people come down and uh, if you're not able to help someone else will catch up and you can just come around and help when you when you do have time so um, these are uh, really general guidelines as to what uh, what can you? What can we do when you spot a newcomer? Uh, so we've we've had experiences where uh, people want to apply for an internship and they have they don't have an environment wherein uh, they don't even know that they need to have uh, say a 4 GB memory or um, say a 25 GB hard disk and to set up an OpenStack environment. So it's uh, it's difficult when you just uh, when you find someone like that and you just point them to a document. They probably don't even know the basics to install. Uh, 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 OpenStack or get going with it, say DevStack or any other project. So it's uh, it's important that we check with them uh, where they stand and what what their interests are, um, and be a little more patient if they if they just stumble upon at the first step where they don't even know what requirements are. Um, uh, make sure you point them to the documents and make sure you at least if you don't have time, it's it's a fantastic opportunity to introduce them to the other team people so that. Uh, uh, more opinions and more knowledge, and uh, well, that's how we increase our uh, talent talent pool in any environment. I think so. Uh, make them let them know that uh, they can uh, ping you at certain times, if not all the time. Let them know that this is what is an available time for you, or um, make sure that uh, they hang out in the uh, team meetings because that's where the entire community gets together and actually discusses um, uh, the issues and the way to move forward. Yeah, uh, so uh, Rosella will take on from here. Yeah, so um, are you ready to start mentoring? I hope uh, every one of you is asking this question and because we really need more mentors. And so the good news is if you're asking, am I ready to mentor? Probably you are. Uh, so in my experience at the beginning with OpenStack, you're just so focused on learning how to get things done or how to interact with the people. So you're just so full immersed in yourself and in how you can learn. So if you have one second now <laughs> and you wonder, am I ready to mentor somebody else? Probably you already managed to learn the basics and you already feel comfortable. But still, <coughs> let me provide you some uh, criteria to judge if you are ready to mentor or not. Uh, so you know that OpenStack is pretty complex. You know that we use lots of tools and there's lots of knowledge involved here. So of course we expect mentor to, um, to have this kind of knowledge so that they can teach uh, people. Uh, there's no like formal requirement, like we are not saying you need to be a co-reviewer or anything like that, but for sure you need to be familiar with the tools that the community uses. So. Uh, Git, Garrett, you have to um, imagine that you're going to teach to somebody, uh, for example, to fix a bug and submit a patch. So if you cannot do it yourself, you won't be able to teach it. And um, uh, also, we you need to uh, to know how to uh, get involved with the community, like for example, how the blueprint process works or how we use the mailing list, the channels, uh, because this is also uh, important. It's not a technical knowledge, but it's, uh, it's the basic to be part of, of the community. Uh, so one important point that uh, sometimes it's not clear is that the mentoring is not babysitting. So we are not expecting you to uh, work full time uh, with somebody else just uh, to, to get him, him or her started. Mentoring is, uh, is a very good experience and it doesn't really need a long time. So a few hours a week are usually, are usually okay, then it depends on how much you want to commit. But don't think uh, like, okay, I have to take care of this person forever. No, uh, you, you have to set limits and uh, you can have a work life even if you're mentoring. It's not like a full-time activity. 
And uh, another point is that uh, something that it's a requirement, yes, is that you commit. So uh, Mahati was explaining the internship uh, variable. So usually you have a, a time frame that you commit to be a mentor. And of course, we expect that in this time frame, you will be a variable. So if you're thinking of changing job, maybe it's not a good moment for you to sign up as a mentor because you can assure that you will be a variable. Who knows your future employer, what, uh, if they let you uh, mentor or not. And uh, so another suggestion is that, of course, uh, speak with your employer. And uh, we hope that they will be supportive of this activity. Uh, because, of course, you will need some time. So uh, unless you, you do it in your free time, then it's OK. And uh, like also if you, uh, you usually mentor for, for a specific uh, project in OpenStack. So if you are thinking, like, I don't know, for example, I'm doing Neutron. If I think, OK, uh, I really need something new. I want to do whatever Horizon now. Then it's probably not a good moment for me to mentor in Neutron because I won't be in the community anymore. And it's really important that the mentee has a contact point in the, in the community. Otherwise, it's, uh, they feel a bit lost. So now we are uh, at the last section of our talk that it's about uh, tips and tricks. And uh, Victoria will start with time management. All right. So time management and delegation. So first of all, establish a few ground rules because um, there are sometimes some cultural clash. As I said earlier, was, you are going to work with people with different backgrounds, with different time zones, with different you know, ideas of how mentoring is. So if you establish a few ground rules, you, you are going to make sure that you are not going to you know, um, burn out of mentoring. Uh, let them know when you are available. It's like if you want, you can establish one. It's, it's, it's highly advisable that you set up an meeting like of a one-on-one -on -one meeting of 30 minutes uh, once a week or something like that so you can have your mentee asking you questions uh, only in that in that slot and you can keep working on the project you are working with more mind peace <laughs> um, you also should uh, teach them about the main communication channels that is IRC and the mailing list you are not alone here you you are not supposed to mentor alone that is really important. You have the community, you have your team who are, who are working with. So help this newcomer get in touch with the people you are work that you are working with. Um, so when you are not there, you have somebody else that is going to cover for you. Um, and uh, OK, I just covered everything. <laughs> okay. yeah. So get to know your mentee who yeah. wants to do that. Uh, it, yeah. I think I'll do that. Um, uh, so uh, it's very important that, that you like understand who's in front of you like uh, uh, I, I really like to ask a few questions at the beginning because uh, of course you, you need to uh, guide that person through the learning process so you really have to understand what's the starting point like uh, I, I really like to know if they already uh, know Python if they have worked to some some other project before if they are familiar with Git, Garrett uh, and so I mentor for Neutron, so it's also important to understand the networking background uh, because uh, you need to assign some, some task to, to your mentee and uh, you want it to be uh, not too easy, otherwise it's boring, uh, but not too hard, otherwise they won't be able to finish it and it's a bit uh, uh, demotivating. And also we are talking of, so it's a human interaction, so uh, you, you really need to find a, a way to uh, interact with your mentee so that your mentee makes progress and uh, should be a, a good experience. And you, you don't need to be a psychologist, but still, people are very different. There are people who like challenges, uh, people who like to be, to feel comfortable, otherwise they won't risk it. Uh, there are people that are uh, maybe a bit pushy and just ask you questions all the time. So in that case, you might want to say, uh, that's not the way it goes. You should like find a, the answer yourself and then just try. Yeah, once I did that, like try for three hours. <laughs> if you don't find the answer, then come back to me. Because it was uh, sometimes, uh, so they are so new 
that they don't even, uh, they're not even familiar with, I don't know. The like, ways of, yeah. I don't see how it works. Yeah, or the <laughs> wiki, or so they ask you sometimes. They are online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, or maybe they are too shy. And if the, they are too shy, you, you don't have a way to get feedback. Like if people don't tell you, I'm stuck, or I, uh, then you need to ask it yourself, like uh, maybe, uh, yeah, with somebody I used to every couple of days, hey, how is it going? Um, because, yeah, there are some people that simply are too shy to ask questions or they don't feel confident. And you may want to stress, like, questions are okay. Uh, so you really need to find a balance with the specific person. There's no gold rule apart from, you know, get to know your mentee and adapt your style. Yeah, have fun. That's uh, very important point. Uh, it, it's uh, like a volunteer activity, so nobody forces you to mentor. So you, you are uh, expected to enjoy it. Otherwise, uh, what's the point? And uh, it's also, um, I think it's also good for mentor to have a kind of positive attitude. We are all very stressed and busy, but uh, try to really enjoy the time that you're mentoring. And also celebrate the success of your mentee. It uh, might be s something trivial for you know experienced people, but uh, when when somebody new, for example, uh, succeed in you know getting, for example, getting the unit test passing in neutron. For me, it's like <laughs> trivial, but for somebody new, it's a really a great achievement. So you should uh, uh, celebrate that. And uh, sometimes uh, I have to say, mentees. They make some disaster, they are new, and they mess something up. And <laughs> it happens, uh, like a few months ago, uh, a mentee of mine, uh, she was just getting to learn Git review, and she updated other people's patches with lots of merge problems. And you know, people were pinging me, like, what, what's going on? Who is, who is this <laughs> girl? And so- Control your mentee. Control your mentee, yeah. <laughs> So bad things might happen. It's not a problem. I mean, it, it's not a nuclear bomb. It's just uh, something, re some review that got messed up. So just stay cool and smile. And in the end, uh, I think it was uh, also my re responsibility. Like I didn't make sure that she could really use a Git review <laughs> in, a, in a decent way. I was missing some explanation. So next time I will, I will do it better. But really, be positive. And it's, it should be fun. And now Mahati. So uh, it's not expected that mentors know everything. For instance, um, there was a case where for, while applying outreachy or any other internship, there is a process, certain process to go through. And uh, uh, even in my case, I had given all the links, go here, do first step, go here, sign up for this uh, mailing list, go here, sign up the form, fill up the form, and sign up the agreement. So. I had I made sure that uh, my mentor uh, knew what to do and knew what to do when because it's uh, it's not their only job like she said it's not their it's not their only life it's it's not expected that they know everything and when you see an opportunity that they don't know anything I think it's uh, or rather if you are mentoring and if you think that you don't know anything I think it's a great opportunity to go and explore it along with your mentee and that will be a fantastic experience for uh, both of you. Yeah. I think uh, that's uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, the upstream training link uh, that's up there is where uh, mentors need to go and sign up. Uh, that happens. Uh, that opens up. I think every uh, uh, every summit. Yes, but uh, the sign up opens up like a month before, and uh, the guidelines are uh, what your time commitment should be and uh, what is expected of uh, a mentor. Uh, you can. Uh, that's the guidelines that has been formed very recently. So do take a look. Um, it's they're very flexible and very reasonable as well. Okay, thank you very much. Now we are open for questions if we have some time. Uh, there are two microphones. Uh, no, sorry, only one. Um, if you want, if you have any doubt, if you have any comment, feel free to ask questions. We are here for you. Or if not, you can reach us on Twitter or NRC. Yeah, any questions on how to mentor or where to look for uh, guidance or documents or feel free to drop by on OpenStack OPW channel and we're always there. I don't know if I need a mic, but 
Oh, it's being recorded. Yeah, yeah. Been, okay. yeah. Um, I came in late, but um, what, what's the metric, or how do we know a mentorship has been successful? Because it is so, so you know, it is a continuous yeah. process. And if you have covered it, I can talk to you offline. I came in like halfway through the session. No, it's fine. Uh, we actually didn't mention that part. Uh, we are currently gathering data from former interns of both OHG and Google Summer of Code internships to see what they are doing now, uh, how if they are working full time in OpenStack or if not, how are they using the experience they gain during their internships uh, for their professional life. Currently, like I can say, like without entering into details, that we got a good number of interns that now are working full time in uh, OpenStack. Well, one of them is me. <laughs> <laughs> I started, I was in the first round of Richie for OpenStack, and now I'm working full time as a software engineer for Red Hat. Another one is Mahati as well. And yeah. um, we have Anita Kuno. Um, we have Sayali in Sali. there. <laughs> yes, Sayali. We have several cases that are now full time contributors for OpenStack working in uh, really hard projects for OpenStack. But certainly, uh, I, if you want, I can reach you after we get the exact numbers. And but another metric could be as simple as they, they made a progress on what they're doing. It, uh, it, it's just, the, I mean, the other way to measure is that whatever they're doing, they've made progress on that. Say they're, uh, they're trying to uh, uh, fix a feature or, I mean, fix a bug or uh, write a feature. If they've made, I mean, if they've progressed, we'd know at least uh, how, what progress is, right? At least they've moved on from one step to the other. That's also uh, called a success. That, yeah. Hi. 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 Um, I'm curious about uh, what are the projects or topics that the mentees are more interested? Wow, Not neutral. <laughs> Not neutral, <laughs> for sure. Well, that, that's a good question. Actually, uh, we noticed that, um, that the people that got involved with OpenStack through the internship we mentioned, um, they, we, we have a a wiki page in which we list all internship ideas uh, for them to, you know, tasks that they can accomplish in three months. And usually, like newcomers, go to the safe things and pick those projects that are already listed there. And usually, it's quite buyer. It's like we have uh, mentors working in OpenStack that submit ideas frequently, and that's how they get it started. But um, apart from that, I don't have. I don't know, Mahati. Uh, are you new to open, OpenStack? Uh, you're the one, right, who asked the question? Yeah, are you new to OpenStack? Yeah. I mean, are you asking for yourself? Or, because uh, if that is the case, then um, we all, we have, every project has Launchpad and for tracking bugs and wish list items. So if that's one way to go look at them and get back on the IRC channel and check with the PTL or uh, whoever is working active in the, uh, in the channel. Oh. Are you done? You have a question? Yeah. yeah, I have a question and a comment. Have we, you know, given that we are short on mentors, maybe we go to the TC and ask each of the cores to adopt a mentee? That might be, you know, you'll have uh, how many cores uh, if you add the 200 odd right, cores. Yeah. So you should be able to get, each of them should be able to give back to the community. That's yeah, a good sure. idea, I think. Yeah, that's a good idea. We actually try, you know, to make like the request for mentors more general, not only for course. So it's like, but certainly, um, if we can, you know, make sure that we have at least one per right. some percentage of mentors in the community that will make Starting things. Two hundred and fifty, you might just get yeah. 50. Yeah, but um, I mean, it's it's also they need to be interested, and uh, TC can like. One of OpenStack have uh, have a sign up form, and that did work out pretty well. But uh, I don't know how much can TC actually go and ask, they can ask them, but uh, we don't know the turnout how that's going to be. But certainly that's something we can attempt at. Yeah, I mean for sure we can advertise it more in our communities. Like yeah. yeah, we have mentors in every project, and we can just uh, try to get more mentors just talking to people. I mean I'm doing it myself, and yeah. Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but yeah, it's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. 
So do you, since these internships are only like a few months at a time, um, do you ever get interns that maybe try to bite off more than they could probably chew in that amount of time? Um, and how do you manage those expectations without um, discouraging them? Uh, I think that's something related to what uh, the question was asked on progress. So uh, at least in Outreachy, we do measure prog prog uh, success as progress. Uh, say, I mean, there have been certainly cases where uh, they did uh, take up on a bigger project, but uh, initially we make sure that uh, the mentors get an instruction that uh, they give them a project which fits in the three month duration. But if it doesn't, uh, it's always welcome, it's up to the mentor's discretion uh, to, to assess whether uh, they've made progress or whether that's called success or not. But in, in, in those cases, we do handle in a way where uh, how much did they achieve in, uh, say, three month period? Yeah, it's, uh, you handle it pretty, I think, Outreach at least handles it very well that way. I think it's uh, what I was saying before, like get to know your mentee. So it's uh, the mental responsibility, right. like to have an interaction with the mentee and to make sure that uh, he or she gets as much as he can chew. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. But it, it, it never happened to me, to be honest. I don't know if. We have several cases though yeah. of uh, mentees that keep working after the internships just because they wanted to finish their task and yeah. for some reason that it was not their fault, the project extended. But yeah, thanks. Thank you. I'm sorry I, I cut you off on the bugs and features. Where do you find it? I think uh, we can certainly give you links offline, um, but on the Outreachy channel, we are very active and you can post questions there as well. We're always ready to give you documents or pointers. We're happy to do so. Great. I think we're out of time, so thank you all very much. Please feel thank free you. to reach us if something yeah. else come up. And uh, feel, uh, feel free to become a mentor. <laughs> yes, as <Yeah>. well. <laughs> thank thank you. you very much. Thank you.